Hello everybody, uh, welcome back to another video. Uh, as you can probably tell, uh, today's topic is going to be Culkin, only Culkin. Um, in the past I've done a video uh, KTC Nepros ratchets, uh, but I never had one done for uh, Culkin tools, so this is the time. Um, I'm not only going to be talking about uh, Culkin ratchets, but uh, I think Culkin deserves a special spotlight. Uh, because not only am I a fan of theirs, um, I just think that they have a unique history behind them, a uh, unique company. Uh, they're a specialist uh, in socketry items. Um, not a lot of companies in the world. Uh, I'm not even sure of any other company out there that uh, strictly makes uh, socketry items like Culkin does. Um, let me just uh, talk to you quickly about the ratchets that I own from Culkin. Uh, I got a half inch drive long flex. Uh, I got a multi purpose uh, ratchet uh, and 3 8 drive from them. That was my first, first ratchet from them. Uh, and I got two here on the black uh, Comfort Grip models. Uh, they are exclusive from Koken's Zeal series or the Z series. I'll talk about uh, more of the finer details about the ratchets uh, later on in the video. Uh, but uh, for now, I just want to talk about uh, the history behind the brand, uh, the man behind the brand, because um, he deserves a uh, notable uh, mention. Um, this sticker, you may have seen it uh, before. Uh, if you purchased a Coke and item, uh, they like to uh, give out stickers. Um, in case you're not uh, familiar with the Japanese characters uh, that reads Yamashita Koken. Um, just to give you a, a little insight behind the the name itself, uh, Koken uh, is an acronym uh, from the Japanese word Kogyo Kenkyusho. Uh, Kogyo is uh, Manufacturing Kinkyusho is a research facility, so we got uh, manufacturing research facility facility and this these two characters uh, is translated as Yamashita, which is the the man's name. Uh, his full name is Yamashita Soichiro uh, So we got uh, Yamashita Koken um, So it's Mr. Yamashita's uh, Manufacturing research facility so there you have it. That's their official uh, name. Um, so let's talk a bit more about uh, Mr. Yamashita. Um, he was born in the 1800s. Um, and let's just go through the quick facts. Uh, in 1907, um, well, he was interested in the English language. So he studied the English language. Uh, and as a matter of fact, he goes to the United States and he enrolls in an automotive program, uh, which he graduates from. And for six years, uh, he works for the F Ford company uh, at a Ford dealership. He becomes a mechanic for six years. And in total, he works uh, for 16, or sorry, uh, he. He ends up in the United States for uh, 16 years. Um, during that time, apparently, uh, he had gained a lot of uh, knowledge working with uh, model, I think it was A's or T's. He liked to disassemble them and reassemble them uh, for fun. Uh, so he was a mechanic at heart. Um, in 1927, uh, he goes back to Japan and uh, in time for um, the first Ford uh, manufacturing plant in Yokohama, Japan. Um, by the way, he had, a, he had a son, and he named after uh, Henry Ford himself, uh, who apparently uh, interviewed uh, Mr. Yamashita, uh, perhaps uh, in relation to the uh, uh, Ford plant in Yokohama. So... Goes back to Japan, yep, yeah, uh, works works at Ford, um, and in, I think it was 1930-ish, uh, he moves over to General Motors, 
because uh, they were opening up a plant in Osaka, Japan. And uh, he later became vice president for uh, General Motors in, of Japan. So he was, uh, he was in no way a, a slouch uh, for a man of his time. Uh, uh, he took up on the English language and even went to the United States. Um, so he, is, uh, he was a rare individual for his times. Uh, in 1941, he registers the Koken name, and uh, after the war, uh, 1946, I think it was, he opens uh, his doors uh, to the Koken uh, manufacturing plant. So that is the, uh, the background, uh, the man behind this uh, Koken name. Uh, I thought uh, he deserves a worthy mention. Um, so during his time in 1920s, uh, living in, living in uh, the United States, uh, as far as uh, hand tool history goes, uh, that era uh, seems to be like, you know, arguably the golden age. Uh, you know, there was a lot of going, things happening as far as hand tool development, uh, a lot of innovation inventions uh, were made at that time and likely you know him being a mechanic working at a dealership uh, he was surrounded with uh, automobiles and the tools that go along with it so I would imagine he was uh, uh, had his hands on with sorry about the uh, sirens going on here um, so he would have been uh, exposed to brands I would imagine like Blackhawk or uh, Baldwin Worcester or uh, Plum, uh, you know those are my speculations. But uh, you know he was he was involved. He was in, he probably would have been influenced by such brands. Uh, and when he started Koken, I would imagine he uh, would have created tools uh, for the probably for the first time in Japan uh, with uh, you know American flavor, shall I say. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any, uh, you know, old Coke and catalogs, uh, so I can't really, really say for certain. Um, but Coke and bread and butter has been this uh, parahead design. Uh, they've been making this style for uh, for a very, very long time, and I would imagine that to be because of his exposure to. American brands uh, like the ones that I've mentioned. Um, I'm just going to flip the page here. So this is the type of uh, mechanism that is standard on uh, Koken's standard ratchets. Uh, they are uh, dual pawl on opposing ends. Uh, these were the earliest types where it was a one-step dog and uh, Koken if I may say so, perfected it. Uh, the American design, um, which is commonly associated with Plum or Proto, um, they came up with a two-step dog. Um, so here we are at uh, 2019. Um, if you are interested in upgrading your ratchet, uh, you know, maybe expanding on your collection and uh, you happen to have, look through the Colkin catalog. Here I have a you know, 2018 catalog. You flip through the pages, uh, through eighths drive, you're looking at these ratchets, you know, pretty cool looking. You got uh, different handle styles you can get, uh, you know, knurled, polished, uh, two component handle, even industrial finish. And you're like, yeah, pretty excited. And then you look at the tooth counts and you see uh, 24, 24, uh, let's just flip through here. 24 tooth, 24 tooth. Yeah, what's going on? Uh, in this day and age, you would expect a company like this, who's been around for a long time, to be at the cutting edge, uh, you know, producing 72 tooth uh, at minimum. Um, you know, their highest tooth count uh, mechanism they have is their round head, which is at 45, but all the other pair heads are at 24. Uh, at least in their standard lineup. So, what what what's what is the reason for that? Uh, um, my answers are this. Um, 
that's probably not going to be the only reason but uh, as far as I am understanding coal can really um, adheres to certain uh, philosophy mentality um, that the user feedback is a very uh, important high importance to them um, as far as their ratcheting mechanism uh, the customers prefer the extremely low back drag mechanisms that uh, these are uh, known to have and they certainly do um, many people you might be a user already and you can probably agree with me that uh, these types of uh, mechanisms have a very user-friendly feature uh, this super low back drag mechanism uh, and long-time users uh, have been accustomed to that and perhaps that is a prerequisite uh, that they want um, even in a current day uh, coal can ratchet. So th that's my uh, quick uh, reason behind why uh, these 24 tooth mechanisms are still uh, standard for coal can. Um, but you know, they did see that uh, there was a need, may may maybe not necessarily a need, but uh, perhaps the company wanted something new. Uh, and they decided to come up with uh, this new concept called the Z-Series or Zeal. Uh, in 2010, uh, they came up with uh, Zeal, which stands for the Evolution of Automotive Service Lineup. Um, so up, up, to, up to this point, you know, Colcan's uh, standard line of tools. Um, let me also talk a little bit about the history behind the uh, Kokan's uh, first exports. Um, you know, Mr. Yamashita was fluent in this English language. Uh, he spent, you know, quite a bit of time in the United States, so he likely knew, uh, you know, U U.S., not just U.S., but the Western uh, business practices. Uh, and knowing the English language, he looked not just domestically in Japan as a place for business, but he looked at the world. Um, so. Uh, in 1957, um, New Zealand became the first country to receive uh, coal can tools uh, outside of Japan. And uh, as a matter of fact, if you are a viewer from New Zealand, um, maybe you can chime in on the comments section. Uh, have, you, have you been exposed to coal can tools for uh, many years? Uh, yeah, I'd just like to hear about that. Um, so... Uh, again, uh, Colcan's standard lineup has been manufactured to conform to standards, uh, standards that are uh, globally accepted, uh, like the ISO DIN standard, uh, as well as meaning JIS. Um, so these standards are, you know, minimum requirements. Um, as long as you conform to them, uh, as far as I understand, you know, you can market your uh, tools to many industries around the world. So um, when it comes to the Z, the Z series, uh, they decided to not just necessarily stick to a, a standard or conforming to any particular standards, but rather they embarked on this uh, new cons idea of um, uh, manufacturing their socketry items uh, to go beyond minimum standards uh, and actually shoot for uh, tolerances um, that are a lot closer, uh, a lot more demanding, uh, stringent standards. Um, so that's sort of the background. And in fact, uh, the Z series is um, have more geared towards the automotive trade as opposed to the Coke and standard lineup, which is more industrial. Um, so this is sort of a automotive based um, uh, concept. So if we look at some of the details, uh, the features that make the Z series uh, different from their standard lineup or from most other manufacturers, uh, 
is, for example, the tolerances uh, in, in the square and the broaching. Uh, in this case, let's look at the square. We have uh, ISO DIN, which has a standard uh, set for the tolerance on the square on the female end, uh, while Zeal maintains a much narrower um, tolerance margin. So you couple that with this uh, innovative um, profile for the ball detent on the on the uh, female end of a of a socket or or, or any socketry item. So this uh, profile, what that does is the spring acting against the the ball, acting against this special profile, this unique profile, exerts a force that in that direction. So what that means is that all your socketry items fit uh, tighter and closer to each other with less slop. So these two uh, measures uh, allow for their socketry items to fit with uh, less slop in them. Now, uh, as far as the ratchets for the Z-series go, um, I've talked about the 24 tooth standard mechanism, but with the Z-series, they decided to uh, give it an upgrade. Uh, they went up to a 36. So yeah, you might be thinking uh, 24 to a 36, that doesn't sound like much, but in reality, uh, at this lower spectrum, low tooth count spectrum, uh, even, even that jump uh, is really measurable, uh, it's really noticeable, as opposed to the higher uh, spectrum, say 90 tooth to 100 tooth mechanism. The difference is not as noticeable. Anyhow, um, so we talked about the low tooth uh, sorry, the low back drag uh, that's inherent in these designs. Uh, obviously, uh, Kolkan is um, uh, philosophy is to uh, ensure that the the end user is happy. Uh, they want to ensure that these mechanisms, which are actually different, uh, it goes from a the double pawl opposing double pawl. Uh, to a single floating pile mechanism. So that that's the one right there. That's their new uh, zeal mechanism with the floating pile as opposed to the dual pile that they've had. So as far as this is supposed to illustrate um, the back drag in uh, centi-newton meters measurement. So this is quantifiable. Um, they compare it with A and B brand. Uh, this would, brands like uh, Nepros and Snap-on, like their older style of ratchets, uh, had this type of mechanism. Uh, so they had 6.5, 8.5 centinewton meters, while both Zeal and uh, Coke and Standard lineup uh, comes in at 1.9 centinewton meter. So uh, again, you know, despite Kolkan coming up with uh, a completely new mechanism, um, they wanted to ensure that the end user uh, is not um, taken to surprise by, you know, like a like a high higher back drag mechanism. So they wanted to keep it. Um, uh, they just didn't want to surprise the customer, the end user. Um, the elastomer grip itself, uh, instead of these being slid on like uh, most uh, comfort grips tend to be, uh, these are injection molded so there's zero risk of the grips coming off or rotating, uh, which can be a problem with uh, other comfort grip models types from different brands. Uh, another thing uh, that I should note is the uh, directional lever, the orientation of them. Despite having two completely different types of mechanisms, 
they want to ensure that the directional lever remains the same, the orientation. So the way it is right now, it's for uh, tightening, likewise on this one. But uh, usually, if you go diff having different types of mechanism, uh, like for example, this one has a floating paw mechanism like like that one you know the these two share similar floating pole mechanisms but the this is this is even though these two are oriented in the same fashion this is meant for loosening which is different from the zeal which is tightening so again uh, I'll repeat uh, Koken wanted to ensure that a long-time user of their standard series hops on to the zeal and if they if the directional levers were different then you know the customer uh, may not be happy <laughs> so to keep the customer happy they uh, ensured that that remained the same so these are the kinds of small details that uh, Koken um, is uh, is taking note of um, and this is the type of thing that sort of makes Koken uh, special or unique in my opinion um, so that's the uh, 3 8 multi-purpose ratchet uh, you can stick a breaker bar handle and you can do things like this or Obviously, you can make a flex type, flex head type ratchet as well. Or, of course, you can use it as is. This was my first ratchet ever. Uh, I bought this probably in uh, yeah 2000, no earlier than 2009. Um, all the ratchets, uh, Zeal and Standard, they all have repair kits available. Oh, I forgot to mention, uh, as far as the broaching goes, uh, Isodin JIS has a margin, the tolerance range. Uh, Zeals is much narrower. Um, not really a word of caution, but uh, if you happen to be working on, you know, um, if you're in the rust, uh, rust belt and you're working, if you're always working on corroded, uh, rusted, uh, fasteners all the time uh, the zeal stuff may may make uh, your work a little bit difficult because uh, it might be a little bit tight fitting uh, in some cases you might even need to hammer your socket on so I mean if you're working with clean stuff like I tend to do not clean but uh, you know newer I'm not really necessarily in the rust bucket so rust belt sorry um, I haven't run into any issues like that. Um, compactness, slim designs uh, is Zeal's, uh, one of Zeal's concepts. So if you can, these, this is making a comparison between the standard and the Zeal uh, and the coordinates drive and 3 8 drive. You can see the size difference in height as well as in diameter. Um, so you will notice that. As a matter of fact, I got two sockets just to quickly show you. Uh, the one on the right is uh, 3 8 drive and uh, the one on the left is uh, quarter inch drive. Uh, shallow sockets. Compare that to a 3 8 drive 13 uh, Koken nut grip from their standard series. Um, yeah, just a quick comparison there. Uh, so what else is there to talk about? Um, well, let's, let me just show you uh, Koken's factory here. Um, let's just go to this page first. So, like, this is probably uh, Koken's earliest days uh, when things were very... Uh, you know, all the all the socketry items were made by hand by a person. Uh, they were turned manually. 
Um, that that is Mr. Yamashita there. Uh, so as you can see, Koken uh, makes you know uh, like two and a half inch drive sockets. Just to give you a scale there, yeah. Chrome uh, chrome sockets. I can't remember what drive size they make it up to, but yeah, for uh, impact sockets, two and a half inch drive uh, sockets is uh, something that they make as well. Uh, the factory itself. Uh, these are just showing some of the older uh, decommissioned uh, uh, equipment machinery. The Koken factory is uh, unusually clean facility for a tool manufacturer, according to the author. Uh, that's uh, Mr. Factory Gear. Uh, this uh, article was from 2006. So extremely clean uh, working facility, which is uh, very unusual for a tool manufacturer. So that's just showing you some uh, of their features. Uh, I could do another video for that some other day. But uh, I hope that covers everything that I wanted to talk about. Um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, talk to you guys about, uh, you know, the man behind this company. Uh, what it is about these uh, low tooth count ratchets, uh, the Z series what makes it different from the rest of the bunch out there. So I hope uh, that was a educational, uh, informative video. Um, I will uh, see you guys in another time. Uh, until next time, have a good day.